guys welcome back to my channel i want to talk about the bet award or should i say the ghetto entertainment television award or better yet the ratchet entertainment television award because that's what it was it was a hot ghetto ratchet mess go ahead smash the like button and please consider subscribing to my channel so BET Awards included OJ Simpson in the In Memoriam segment remembering individuals who passed away in 2024, such as actor Bill Cobbs, baseball player Willie Mays, film producer Clarence Avon, and actor Carl Weathers. Simpson was credited as a former NFL player. Tia Mori introduced the moment as a tribute to the black excellence that we unfortunately lost this year. It's never easy to say goodbye to those who influence us, but we can take a moment to celebrate and acknowledge their contributions to the culture. The celebrities honored changed how our artistry is seen and left us with a legacy that we will always remember. That's what she said. O.J. Simpson died in April at age 76 after battling prostate cancer. He was best known for being found not guilty in his criminal trial for the brutal 1994 slayings of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. The case was dubbed the trial of the century, and his acquittal was considered one of the most controversial verdicts in the history of the American judicial system. He was subsequently sued for wrongful death by the Goldman and Brown families in civil court and found to be responsible for the deaths. Simpson was also convicted of armed robbery in 2008 and sentenced to 33 years in prison, with a minimum of nine years before he was eligible for parole. Simpson was released from prison in October 2017. So Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman's families are not happy. They are slamming the O.J. Simpson tribute. Fred Goldman, Ron's father, says he cannot wrap his head around the O.J. tribute, saying there was absolutely no positive spin on his inclusion in the segment, which was introduced as honoring black excellence lost in the last year. Even though they probably won't, BET should issue an apology. I think they shouldn't include anyone of that caliber, a wife beater, M-word. Mm -hmm. Can't imagine why they would include someone like that. He calls it a slap in the face to his and Nicole's families, insisting BET should have exercised more thought and sensitivity before making such a decision. Nicole's sister, Tanya, echoed the same sentiment, saying it's inappropriate to give an abuser an M-word recognition. She said, whoever thought of doing that owes every domestic violence victim an apology, and that's including our family, and they should be fired. That's right. They are so right. That was so distasteful. How do you put... A M worder in a segment of black excellence. Something is truly wrong with black people. Like there's a disconnect. Like no matter how vile, how evil someone is, they will put them on a pedestal and celebrate them. It's like, yeah, I know he did that, but he was also great at this. It's like what? Like they just love to celebrate degenerates. Like I don't understand. Whatever. I didn't watch that ghetto mess anyways. I don't watch BET Awards. I don't watch any awards. But I did see some clips and it was, oh my gosh, mess, a uh, mess. You hear me? <laughs> but let's move on to the next person on what were they thinking? Vice President Kamala Harris made an appearance at the BET Awards. It was cringe. You guys, it was so terrible. What were they thinking? It was hosted by actress Taraji P. Hansen, and she asked Kamala what she'd been hearing about the upcoming election. Kamala replied, Yeah, girl, I'm out here in these streets. 
And let me tell you, you're right, Taraji. There is so much at stake in this moment. The majority of us believe in freedom and equality. But these extremists, as they say, they're not like us. They're not like us. You believe this? Oh, so cringe. Let me just play the clip for you guys. Check this out. <laughs> so what's on your mind? Oh, Madam VP Harris, I'm worried about the election. Women's reproductive rights are on the line. Our Supreme Court is on the line. Our basic freedoms are being tested. Madam VP, I know you've been traveling across the country. What are you hearing? Yeah, girl, I'm out here in these streets. And let me tell you, you're right, Taraji. There is so much at stake in this moment. The majority of us believe in freedom and equality. But these extremists, as they say, they not like us. No, they not. Yeah, Kamala is in these streets. <laughs> oh my gosh, wasn't that cringe? You know what I don't like? They make everything political. Every award shows political now. Like seriously, can people just watch award shows without all the extra stuff being thrown, without all the stupid agenda, propaganda that they're trying to put out there? Like we don't care. It's an award show. Like what are you doing in there with your stupid skits? Be for real, this is cringe. It's annoying. It really is annoying. But let's move on to the next person on what were they thinking. So Angela Simmons, she is in hot water over the bedazzled green G-U-N clutch she brought to the 2024 BET Awards. Listen, this lady was flashing a white smile as she waved the G-U-N accessory at cameraman on the red carpet. In multiple snaps from the event, she was seen pointing the G-U-N directly at photographers. You can't make this up. Look at her. She looks crazy, right? She looks ridiculous. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Is she on the spectrum? Like, something is clearly wrong. She's 36 years old. And she's the daughter of Ron from Ron DMC. Um, yeah, and her uncle is Russell Simmons, okay? So, yeah. So, so, of course, people, you know, people were upset. A lot of backlash. And someone wrote, I don't know. Angela Simmons doing that on the red carpet just isn't sitting right with me. She knows firsthand of devastation of GUN violence in our community. Yet that's how she chose to post at an award show. So they were referencing Angela Simmons' baby daddy who was shot in K-I-L-L-E-D in 2018. That guy was shot. 13 times all over, arms, legs, his heart, you name it, in front of his house, right? A guy he was talking to, and I guess they were arguing and, and escalated, and the guy, you know, 13 times, and then the guy drove off, and uh, he turned himself in, uh, I'm thinking a week later or whatever. So, yeah, so this lady is 36 years old. Right? So her baby daddy. <laughs> and not only that, she's dating some rapper name. What's his name? What's his name? What is this guy's name? Oh my gosh. Young, no, not young. Uh Earth Gotti? Earth not Earth Gotti, uh Young Gotti. Young Gotti. And guess what? His brother just recently was, you know, by G U N. And this lady is on the red carpet, just like, you know, pointing this G-U-N at photographers and on the red carpet. You cannot tell me that something is not wrong with this lady. Like, yeah, something is not clicking with her. I don't know if she's on the spectrum or something, but so because of all the backlash, she had to put out a statement. And you guys can pause it and read it for yourself. But she said, um... When I chose the purse, I believe it was cute and unique, and I made a poor decision in using it as an accessory to amplify my beauty. <laughs> amplify your beauty, huh? Amplify your beauty? No. You know what amplified your beauty? Those two nose jobs that you had done many years ago. Remember when she had that little cute little... Miss Piggy knows, remember? And they used to like, oh man, she, yeah, people were so cruel. 
They were pegging on her piggy nose. But I thought it was cute. Like, it was a cute little piggy nose. But they were calling her ugly. Then they kept saying, Vanessa is a pretty sister. She's the pretty one. And then next thing you know, Angela, Angela Simmons had, like, her nose done. Yeah. So, no purse can amplify your beauty. That doesn't make any sense. Who in the world or anyone with a brain thought this was a good idea? Like, seriously. Like, I am just, I'm confused as to who goes around pointing their clutch like that. Like, do you do that with all of your handbags? <laughs> I mean, think about it. You thought it was a good idea to go on the red carpet. And then when she was smiling, cheesing, she thought she was really, like, she was doing it. She just looked crazy, like the extra white smile, the different angles, like she looked crazy. And I'm surprised like no one stopped her and said even her uh, her boyfriend, er, what's his name? Young Gotti. Like, he thought it was cool too because, you know, he's in that life, you know. So it's like, I don't know. It's like no matter how much money they have, they still just can't help themselves. They just have to, like, just... You know what? I'm going to leave this alone. I've said enough. Yeah, it was tacky, but moving on. So the last thing I wanted to discuss was Usher being honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award. And uh, I'm not going to really get into the whole Usher speech. It was, I think, 17 minutes long. So they also had a clip featured words from Tony Braxton, L.A. Reid, Janelle Monae, Jermaine Dupree, Jennifer Hudson, and Kevin Hart, and more, right? Eh? So a few artists graced the stage with a tribute. Childish Gambino, Kiki Palmer, Summer Walker, Coco Jones, Chloe, Tanache, Tayana Taylor, Victoria Monet, and Lotto. You notice it was only one guy perform his one of his songs? Everyone else were like women. So you're telling me they couldn't find any other male artists to perform his hits? They had Kiki Palmer dressed like a dude, right? And they had Summer Walker. It's just, do you honestly, I didn't watch. Like I said, I don't watch these award shows, but I did see the clip. And Coco Jones was the only one I thought was great. She did great. She, she worked the audience, and it was great. Now, Tanashi, what? Like, like. They could, honestly, they could not find anyone. They couldn't even find Chris Brown. Oh, wait, I think Chris Brown <laughs> beat up Usher, remember? <laughs> Months ago, I did report on it. Yeah, at the, at the skating rink, because he, yeah, he was, um, yeah, he tried to come for Tayana Taylor. Yeah, tried to attack her or something, and then Chris, uh, Usher, like, followed him outside. And yeah, and then like this, yeah, Usher had a bloody nose and everything. So yeah, they, they were actually gonna use Chris Brown. <laughs> so, but there's nobody else. I mean, Childish Gambino? Like, isn't that the guy that did the This Is America? And like, where has, where, what? How? Performing an Usher song? I don't know, right? So they had Kiki Palmer dressed like, you know, all tomboyish and, uh, yeah, whatever. Summer Walker was on some, I don't know. Like I said, the only one that did great was Coco Jones. Chloe, you know Chloe, the one from, uh, her sister is Halle Bailey, the little mermaid, the black little mermaid, yeah. So Chloe, yeah, she, I don't know. It's like, she's just not, I don't know. Like, she just was just extra with the sexy. Her album came out, and it failed major. Like, it failed because she's selling S-E-X. This girl has talent. Yeah, and she's under Beyonce, okay? So you know, both of them are under Beyonce, her and her sister. And did you? Ex what did you expect? You know, I'm not going to. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, but Chloe, like, I don't know. I think that performance was just um, just lacking. It's just they were just pushing SEX and just sexiness for no reason. And, yeah, <sighs> Lotto suck. Yeah, her performance was terrible. Like, it just did not make sense. The, the people who performed his tribute did not make any sense. Like, 
Tanache, Chloe, Simon Walker, Childish Gambino. Okay, let's talk about Tiana Taylor and Victoria Monet uh, performance. That was disturbing to me. Tiana Taylor is a whole stud, right? We know that, you know. And she had, so she was the man. She dressed like um, like the man in the suit and everything. So, yeah, it's, it fits her, you know, because she is a, a real stud, right? But the performance was disturbing because Tiana Taylor seemed like she enjoyed that performance a little too much. Like, she was enjoying it. Because, remember, she really likes women. So, yeah, and then she's grinding and on this women and they like it was just like this this is BET like kids are watching this like this is disturbing right so they just they just it looks bad she to me she looked like like a predator on that stage right because she really does like women she really is a stud you know so and then yeah she's doing all that and then she's dressed like a like a whole guy and it's just, it was disturbing. I'm sorry, it was disturbing. It was disturbing, and the whole act was just like, wait, this is a whole, like, this is soft, P-O-R-N, okay? It just, it, it didn't look right. It didn't look right. And because, you know, Tiana Taylor reminds me of Alicia Keys. Remember when Alicia Keys, when she came out, when she came out in the scene, and she was a she was a whole like stud, right? But they had to change her whole appearance, right? They had her wearing tight clothings and then the braids, right? Because let me tell you, my cousin has a stepsister who hung out with Alicia Keys' ex girlfriend, and they all would hang out on the Lower East Side of Manhattan in Hell's Kitchen. That's where Alicia Keys is from, right? So Alicia Keys was a whole stud. Before the fame, she was a whole, I mean, like the man, like the whole butch, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so when she got the fame, she did change her whole appearance. But her walk always gave her up, right? Her walk was always still masculine, always masculine. No matter what she she would have on a dress, but when she walked in those heels, because she couldn't walk in heels, she just looked so awkward, she couldn't do it. And I haven't seen her walk in a while, so I don't know if she got it unlocked now, but I know for many years, many years, she could not, she, her walk always gave her up, no matter what she was wearing, she would look very feminine, very nice, but she still, when she would walk, it was like, okay, okay, yeah, this, no, this is a gimmick, right, and I don't know, they had her do some kind of ritual, where she had to steal someone's husband to seal the, the deal, because it makes no sense, because Alicia Keys, from, <laughs> from what, yeah, from what we know, she, yeah, she was a whole stud. No men, straight up stud. So then, yeah, then she stole someone's husband, Swiss Beats, right? She stole Swiss Beats from his wife. That was a whole ritual because that didn't make any sense. I mean, Swiss Beats. And let me tell you, I know about Swiss Beats, okay? Swiss Beats you know, that's a different story. <laughs> you know, because he, yeah, I, let's move on. Maybe I'll share this another video. I don't know. But yeah, so Tiana Taylor reminds me of Alicia Keys because Tiana Taylor, before she, you know, got her little fame, she was a whole, you know what I mean? So when she came, this is how we found out she liked men. She came out uh, on a breakfast club. She came on the breakfast club and she put her best friend at the time on blast, this video girl named Tay. Yeah, Tay. And uh, <laughs> and Tay was on the in the video. You know the song, Baby, If You Give It To Me, I Give It To You. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so Tay, yeah, so she said how she was dating this guy, this little basketball player. I don't know. He's, I don't think he was well known. And yeah, Tay was messing with him, or Tay took the guy from her. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, we were like, wait, what? Tayana Taylor gets down with men? Wait, what? Wait, it was weird. 
And then next thing you know, she was with uh, Iman Shepard, her her ex-husband. I guess, yeah, they got a divorce just recently. So, yeah, I have to do a video on that because I forgot. Um, yeah, there's so much I'm doing. There's so much I'm doing. And I'm a very busy, busy girl. So, yeah, but I'm going to try to put out these videos. But, yeah, so... Yeah, so the Tiana Taylor and Victoria Monet performance was disturbing to me because Tiana Taylor, you know, it's just, I don't know, she just seemed like a predator on the stage because the way she was dressed like a man and, and then the whole, it just seemed like she was enjoying it, like she enjoyed that performance. She probably, you know, you, I wouldn't put it past it because it was just disturbing. It was like soft, P-O-R-N, okay, and... It didn't look right. It did not look right. It was the bumping and the gr just disgusting, if you ask me. Okay. <laughs> but that's all, you guys. Um, yeah, so that's all. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, please subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.